Thank you for that. Take your Bibles tonight. We're in the book of Matthew, chapter 17. And as you're turning there, teenagers, you can be dismissed for your service and had another uh, good night over at the bus services and saw a picture they uh, sent me of the bleachers almost full over there. And we'll, uh, one of these days, we'll have some pictures to show you and get that uh, so that you can see what's going on over there. Uh, and of course, on Sunday, we still run uh, one of our buses and then two vans. We pick up uh, the teenagers and adults and families that uh, want to come. And so it's been working very well and appreciate all of those that are over there working and participating in that. Uh, this Sunday morning, don't forget our second uh, a second message in our series, uh, Ten Commandments for Healthy, Happy Homes. And last week we looked at uh, putting the Lord first. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Uh, this uh, Sunday we're going to look at the second commandment and uh, talking about having no idols. And uh, boy, we can erect idols, not the little statues, uh, but we can put things before the Lord uh, that uh, take precedence over Him in our life and in our heart and in our love. And so uh, we'll preach about that. And then next Sunday night, I mentioned last Sunday that uh, I, I mentioned the book of Malachi just as one of the points and one of the messages as it related to giving. And I mentioned that there are a lot of good lessons to be learned from Malachi. Unfortunately, every time we hear from it, normally it's as it relates to chapter 3 and giving. So I went back and started just reading it again this week on Monday. And I'm going to this Sunday night just start a real quick three or four week series, maybe take a chapter a week and just preach through the book of Malachi. I've never done that, and I think that's something that the Lord is leading me to do, and so it's very, very helpful and interesting and very relevant to the day in which we live. So I hope you'll be here uh, Sunday morning and Sunday night. Well, Sunday I mentioned giving. Uh, tonight I'm going to, the lesson is on fasting. And so uh, those are the two dreaded ones for believers, uh, giving and tonight fasting, uh, but such an important uh, spiritual discipline uh, that, uh, that I want to help us tonight. Look at Matthew 17, and let's start following along in verse number 14. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic. He was just describing how he was acting. He was, he was demon possessed. Uh, he was out of his mind. He was just out of control and sore vexed for oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples and they could not cure him. And that's the issue. While Peter, James, and John were uh, with the Lord Jesus, were up on the Mount of Transfiguration, uh, this man brought his son to the other disciples, and they were powerless to heal uh, this boy. And so, look at verse 17. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation. And so, uh, right away, we're looking at the topic of faith, or in this instance, faithless, not having the faith that they needed. How long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Uh, bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? Now, I would say this that. The, the disciples came, uh, and they came with a teachable spirit. They they weren't they weren't accusatory. They weren't angry. They weren't frustrated, uh, except in their own inability. They were interested. They were curious. They really wanted to know, uh, Lord, why didn't this work for us? And I'll tell you, if we as God's children 
would come to him with more of that spirit when something's not working, when something's not working in our home, when something's not working in prayer, when something's not working in ministry, when something just isn't working financially. If we would come to him with a, with a teachable spirit, uh, with a sincere desire to learn, and if we'd come to him and say, Lord, why is this not working in prayer? Uh, he would be happy to answer uh, that prayer. Uh, unfortunately, uh, oftentimes we either think we know it all or we don't think that anybody, including the Lord, can teach us anything. Uh, and, and so that's a problem. I, I like it because in verse 20, right away, Jesus answered. Uh, they asked the question, why couldn't we cast him out? And right away he gives the answer. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. He said, you prayed, you tried, you, you did all the mechanics right, but you lacked the faith in your prayer, uh, in your ministry to be able to, to cast out the demon. He said, and he goes on to say, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, that's a very small seed. If some of the ladies or some of the kitchens represented might have some mustard seed, it's a very tiny seed, barely able to see. He said, but if your faith is that is even that size, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Now I want you to notice that little last phrase, nothing shall be impossible unto you. But, uh, and that relates back to if we have faith uh, when we pray, uh, the faith the size of a grain of mustard seed. How be it, in verse 21, he said, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. And so Jesus introduces to the disciples the idea of fasting in the context of prayer and in the context of not getting prayer answered and in the context of increasing their faith uh, so that they can pray and have their prayers answered. Now, we know the setting. I mentioned Jesus took Peter, James, and John up the mount. Uh, he was transfigured before them. They saw Moses and Elijah appeared. And, uh, and uh, if that wasn't enough, they heard the voice of God say, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And then Peter and James and John said, Lord, let's make three tabernacles and let's just stay here. Uh, they just wanted to camp out, enjoy the blessing, enjoy uh, the show, enjoy all that they were experiencing. Unfortunately, that's not God's plan. God takes us to the mountaintops every now and then. Uh, it's wonderful as a church to have a revival. It's wonderful when we have our missions conference and uh, when we have those mountaintop experiences. But unfortunately, we can't live there. That's not God's plan for us to live on the mountain because we've got to go back down into the valley where the people are, where the needs are, uh, where they need to hear about the Lord Jesus, where they need someone to pray for them and help them and, and even heal them. And so uh, Jesus uh, made sure that they went down uh, back into the valley and, uh, and we'll look at that here in just a moment. Let's pray and then we'll get into the message and the lesson uh, for tonight here from Matthew chapter 17 about uh, faith uh, and prayer and fasting tonight. Father, help us as we look at and study from Scripture something that is absolutely important. It's important as much in our day as it was here in this day in our passage in your word. And Lord, yet it's something that we don't do. It's something that we uh, don't participate in. It's something that we neglect. And yet, Lord, it just uh, simply could be the one thing that's lacking, the, the one difference maker in our prayer life. And so, Lord, help us tonight. Challenge us tonight. As we go through the passages in Scripture, would your Holy Spirit uh, speak to our heart? Would you impress upon us 
our need uh, to pray. And, and Lord, uh, maybe that, that specific thing for which we should set aside some time to fast. And Lord, uh, convict us, help us in every way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. While Jesus was up on the mountain, his disciples could not heal uh, this man's son. Uh, this man's son was possessed of a demon. He would often throw himself in the fire and throw himself in the water. By the way, uh, de demonic activity and, and demonic oppression and even demonic possession goes hand in hand with a desire to hurt oneself. It has a desire. Uh, it, it goes along with uh, preoccupation with death and very dark uh, subjects, but also with self mutilation and hurting oneself. And so we see that, and we saw that in the maniac of Gadara and other uh, places where uh, the Bible talks about folks being demon uh, possessed. And so that's what happened to this boy. And the disciples tried. They, they prayed. They tried to do what they'd seen Jesus do. They, they tried to cast out uh, the demon from this boy, uh, but they could not. They were powerless uh, because the Lord Jesus tells them here about their faith. But Jesus came down, saw the need, cast out the demon. And, uh, and when he did, the disciples asked him that question, why couldn't we cast him out? And uh, I tell you, that's a good thing about the disciples. They weren't afraid to ask, and, and Jesus gave them uh, the answer. Jesus answered them very plainly in verse 20. He said, if you look there, because of your unbelief. He said, you couldn't get this done. You couldn't get this prayer answered because you didn't have enough faith. And then in verse 21, he goes on to expand in his lesson and, and he is teaching them how to increase their faith. He said, how be it this kind, uh, this, this difficult kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. And so if uh, he said there are certain things, certain harder cases, certain harder prayer requests, not, not that they're harder for the Lord, but they're things that the Lord wants you and I uh, to be a little more committed to, a little more uh, sacrifice involved. He said, this kind cometh forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. And it could be that you have this kind of need. It could be that in, maybe in your home or family or extended family that you have a need that you've been praying uh, about and it might, it might be praying about it for some time and yet not seeing answer to prayer. It might be in your finances or in health needs that you might have this kind that you've prayed but not seen an answer and it might just take taking this to the next level, which is praying and adding to our prayer the element of fasting. And I said earlier, this is a lost discipline in modern Christianity. The old timers used to call prayer, fasting, Bible reading, spiritual disciplines. And they called them spiritual disciplines because they're not always easy. Uh, the flesh doesn't always cooperate. Uh, there, there always seems to be something uh, more enjoyable to the flesh to do that we get preoccupied with. Uh, but, but the Lord said, here's a discipline that I want you to be involved in. You know, we're losing our desire to do the things in Christianity that don't come easy. I mean, we just live in an easy day. We live in a soft day. We live in a day where if it doesn't come easy, we lose interest and we go on to something else that we think is easier. Our children are learning that. Uh, they're learning. They're not learning uh, the, the discipline of sticking with something. And, and when it's not easy, just persevering and, and figuring out and learning and growing, they're, they're just uh, following right along in our footsteps. If it doesn't come easy, uh, and, and as parents, we don't really insist that they stick with things because uh, we don't want 
to make things too hard for them. And it's just a strange day in which we live. But our Christianity is just jettisoning, just just getting rid of anything that's not easy. Uh, we're formatting our churches for comfort and ease and, uh, and, and just uh, making it as easy as we can. And uh, fasting's not one of those things. Uh, fasting is a thing that's, that's difficult. Fasting is a thing that takes discipline. Fasting is a thing that your flesh is not going to want to do or enjoy, but it's absolutely necessary. So I want to give us tonight some, uh, some lesson on what is fasting and what does fasting do for the believer? What is fasting and what does fasting do uh, for the believer? And the first statement, the first point is this, fasting is letting go of something physical in order to put more emphasis on prayer and the spiritual. So uh, fasting is giving up something that the flesh desires and taking that time or that energy or that emphasis and placing it on prayer, extra time in prayer, more emphasis on prayer. This flesh has a death grip on us. It just simply does. So often uh, we're at the mercy of the flesh. Uh, we eat when the flesh says it's hungry. We, we sleep when the flesh says it's tired. And there is, there is wisdom in, in having a good schedule and, and taking care and, uh, physically and sleeping uh, well. But uh, when you and I got saved, our spirit and soul became born again. But we still carry around this body, this flesh. Uh, that's why Paul said, who shall deliver me? From the body of this death. He was talking about uh, this flesh and, and uh, the great hymn that we sing that talks about that day when we're going to drop this robe of flesh and rise to meet the Lord. That's going to be a glorious day uh, when we're not restrained uh, by the flesh. We're not tempted by the flesh. We're not hindered by the flesh. And uh, But the, our, our, our situation now is that this flesh controls the average believer. Uh, and, uh, and I want to say this, uh, fasting loosens the grip of the flesh. Flat fasting says, I can do without feeding you for a time, for a season, maybe a day, maybe a couple of days. We're going to see here in a little bit how Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights and deprived the flesh so that he could focus on and spend time with the Heavenly Father uh, in prayer. But fasting says, I can do without feeding you for a time. But the problem is nobody wants to do anything without anything in our day. Uh, we live in a, a country where we don't have to do without much. And, and unfortunately, this modern Christianity is teaching us that this convenience Christianity is teaching us that we shouldn't have to give up anything or we shouldn't have to do without anything. But that is absolutely contrary to what Jesus is teaching his disciples and us when it comes to fasting. Nobody wants to give anything up. But Jesus said, if you want this kind of answer, it will only come by prayer and fasting. Now, here's the idea of how it builds our faith and increases our faith. Because the flesh is everything faith isn't. Uh, faith is, faith you can't see faith. Uh, faith you can't touch. The flesh is everything that, and that's why we get so prone uh, to, to not walk by faith. We want to see it. We want to know. We want to be able to touch it uh, before uh, we, 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 we act or before we decide. Hebrews 11.1, 1, the Bible says there, Now faith is the substance 
of things hoped for. Faith is very real. Uh, faith is as real as this pulpit is real, but what we can't touch it like I can touch this pulpit. It's a substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. And so uh, faith is not flesh. In fact, faith and flesh are contrary one to the other. Uh, what's not seen is faith and spiritual. What's seen is physical and flesh. And it's certainly not our flesh that needs strengthen. Uh, it's naturally strong. Uh, it naturally controls us. That's why when uh, Jesus took Peter, James, and John into the Garden of Gethsemane to pray uh, with him and, and ended up saying, what, could you not watch with me uh, one hour? And uh, if you've ever tried to pray for one hour, uh, you know how the flesh just rebels. The flesh doesn't want to doesn't want to submit to that. Doesn't want to do that. And, and yet we have to understand that the flesh is very strong. Uh, the flesh is naturally strong. And and as we feed the flesh, it gets stronger. As we as we uh, uh, pamper and give the flesh what it wants, it just gets stronger and stronger. Now fasting though. Uh, it tends to break the grip of the flesh and tends to help us strengthen our faith and strengthen our spirit. Fasting brings us to holy ground in a hurry because we're giving up something that the flesh desperately wants for a season in order to spend more time in prayer. Turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 4. And let's look at this season. Jesus is about to begin his earthly ministry, and, uh, and fasting is a good thing. Boy, if you're about to launch out into a new venture, if God's calling you maybe into a new ministry, if, if you're going to launch out in a new business venture or, or a new venture as a family, uh, a good thing to do because Scripture gives us that example is to set aside some time, not just to pray, but to fast and pray. And look at what Jesus said in Matthew 4, 2. And when he'd fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And so Jesus for 40 days and 40 nights. Now, I've never fasted 40 days or 40 nights. I know some preachers who have, and, uh, and they talk about uh, some, of the, some of the things that happen as your body detoxifies and all of that and uh, and it affects your mind somewhat and it's a very it's a very difficult thing it wasn't an easy thing for Jesus 40 days and 40 nights to fast especially because the whole time he was fasting he was being tempted uh, of the tempter of the devil there in the wilderness but uh, but fasting uh, was important to the Lord Jesus. He taught it. Uh, fasting was a common spiritual activity in the early church. Look in the, your Bibles at Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. And uh, the church at Antioch fasted and prayed before sending Barnabas and Saul on their missionary journeys, Barnabas and Paul. And so, uh, again, we see the principle before a new venture uh, before a new sending out, before a new church planting uh, ministry, before a new missionary sent out, they took time, they set aside time to pray and to fast. Look at verse 2. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said. Uh, can I tell you, I, I think just by fasting and prayer, uh, when you're fasting, you'll hear maybe some things from the Lord that you wouldn't hear otherwise. And so if you're seeking answers but not, not getting any with what you're doing now, it, I would encourage you, the scripture seems to encourage us to spend some time fasting and praying and we will hear some things we wouldn't hear otherwise. As they fasted, the Holy Ghost said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they fasted and prayed, by the way, I like that because it's churches that send out 
uh, missionaries. It's churches that start other churches, it, it, and God has to speak to. We just have to be listening because, uh, and look at all the people that had to listen. Barnabas and Paul had to listen. They were comfortable where they were, but God wanted them to go, and the church had to listen because God wanted the church to send them and to help them and to encourage them. And so, uh, look at it said in verse 3, And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. And so, very interesting to me that fasting and prayer gets us off to a good start in new endeavors. I like that. Now, fasting is doing without something the flesh wants. It's doing without. It's breaking that that uh, that need it's replacing it with spiritual activity and prayer so let's take food for instance now food isn't the only thing that uh, you can give up when it comes to fasting but it is the most common for us and uh, and giving up food for a season loosens the grip of the flesh and when we replace that time that we would normally spend eating or normally spend uh, going out to eat or whatever, uh, we have more time to spend with the Lord. And as we're fasting, and the more hours, the more days that we go without feeding the flesh, I, I believe the more in tune we can become uh, with the Spirit, the more our faith is increased, and the more likely we will be to hear from the Lord uh, in more significant ways. And so we can gain ground in our spiritual lives by fasting and praying. And so uh, saying no to food uh, takes discipline. Saying no to the hunger pains takes discipline, doesn't it? Uh, saying no to the body and the flesh and saying yes to God in prayer uh, is, is something else. Uh, and look, look, well, I'll give you this. In our day, maybe we need a technology fast uh, where maybe TV, maybe, uh, maybe the internet, maybe social media has encroached into our life to the point that that's the things that are hindering us from spending the time we need to in prayer and God's word. And so maybe a time, a season of fasting and doing without those things. And in our day, that's as much a physical denial as food is. It really is. I mean, some people are so addicted to video games that they don't eat. They go without, they go days without stopping to eat because they're so engrossed in the submersive world that they're living in online. And so that's as much a break from the physical, that's as much a denial of the flesh in a lot of cases as food is, and it can certainly have the same spiritual benefit and impact. Uh, other forms of digital entertainment, social media, uh, they certainly don't do anything to strengthen our spirit or increase our faith. Now, let me say this, Pastor, I understand that, that uh, social media, the internet, uh, we, we use it in ministry every day. Uh, it has some, it can be used for some good if we're intentional about it and if we're spiritual about it. But certainly, uh, it, it, uh, it, can, uh, it can be... It can just overwhelm and take over and, uh, and can hinder our spiritual lives, I think, uh, much more than the good from it. But, but I'm certainly not dismissing that there's opportunity uh, to, to make an impact ministry-wise. I'm just saying that we don't use it that way in most cases, and, uh, and we let, let the flesh uh, get in, and we let the flesh get stronger, and our spiritual man is getting weaker the whole time. Uh, so maybe a day or two a week, uh, or a week fasting from all forms of digital stimulus could help us jumpstart our spiritual health and reset our priorities from being physically dominated uh, to being spiritually uh, focused and, and, and it can increase our faith. Uh, you know, I, I like that idea. Fasting, I think, can really, can really break the hold that the flesh has. 
Uh, and I think whatever you're struggling with, if you're struggling with thought and, and your thought life is not what it ought to be, it's not as pure and wholesome as it ought to be, uh, maybe even to the extent of, of having struggles with pornography or other things, I think it's only that, that's, that, that's the season that only fasting and prayer can kind of break that bond of the flesh and reset some spiritual health and I think it can have that big of an impact that it will reset us spiritually uh, there are not just spiritual uh, benefits of fasting and prayer but uh, science tells us there are physical benefits of fasting and certainly prayer uh, but I think fasting for a season resets our blood sugar levels it resets our metabolism and can help uh, jump start and reset all that I think fasting is just a shock to the physical system that helps jumpstart our spiritual health and increase our faith and helps us to have the answer to prayer that we want to have, uh, but, but, uh, but we have to do it. Now, uh, let me show you this. Look back at verse 20. Fasting increases our, our faith in what God can do. In verse 20, he went back and he said, uh, the reason that you couldn't cast out that demon from that boy is because of your unbelief. And he goes on to say, if you had faith as this little mustard seed, and then he goes right into talking about how fasting uh, can help that, and fasting can help our faith to grow. Uh, the disciples knew they needed some things, and so they asked the Lord, teach us to pray. And there's another one where they asked the Lord to increase our faith, Luke 17 and verse 5. And the apostles said unto the Lord, increase our faith. And there's an aspect where fasting, letting go of the physical by refusing food or by, by turning off uh, the, the, the games and the digital stimulus and, and turning to the Lord with extra time in prayer actually increases our faith. And as we pray, God can then respond to the prayer of faith. I like James 5 and verse 15. Have you ever noticed this little phrase? Uh, Jesus is the healer and, uh, and he can certainly heal in our day and answer to prayer. In fact, uh, any health needs, he ought to be the first one we go to. And again, I'm, I'm all for uh, modern medicine as he leads and guides and helps and, and intervenes. But our faith all the way through needs to be in him and his leading. But look what it said in verse five, chapter 5, verse 15. It says there, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up and if he have committed sins they shall be forgiven him uh, did you ever notice that little three words the prayer or the four words the prayer of faith it's not just any prayer that brings healing from the Lord it's not just any effort or any prayer that from the disciples that cast the demon out of that demon possessed boy no it's the prayer characterized by faith, energized by faith. And so often we don't have our prayers answered because we just, we, we don't have that level of faith that we need. And I'm just saying tonight, if we would take some time and, and make fasting uh, a part of our spiritual health or maybe uh, kind of just to reset some things in our spiritual life it can be a huge difference maker in our prayer life fasting is not for show in fact ideally no one will ever know that you're fasting now certainly you have to talk to your loved ones and so forth but uh, fasting is deeply private it's a deeply spiritual activity that we need uh, for this kind. In fact, look at Matthew 6 and verse 16. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 16. Jesus said, moreover, when ye fast, be not, by the way, look at that. He didn't say if ye fast. He said when ye fast. And I'm going to tell you tonight, at the end of the message, I'm going to ask us to commit to fasting. I'm not going to dictate or try to tell you how or where or when, but I'm going to try to get a commitment tonight, including for me, that sometime in the next month or so, we need to fast. We, we, it's not if, and I'm afraid we've treated it as if. 
You know, if I get around to it, if I feel like it, if the circumstances get bad enough. Well, Jesus said, not if, but when ye fast. He treated it like it should be a fairly regular occurrence, a fairly regular part of our Christian life. He goes on to say, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites. And uh, boy, so much of our Christianity is for show. So much of our Christianity is for others' benefit. And I don't mean by, to help others. I mean just to show others. Uh, so much of it is like the, like the, like the Pharisees. He, he said, don't be as the fair, hypocrites as a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. They wanted people to ask them, what's, what's wrong? Why, why aren't you happy today? Why are you so sad today? Uh, that, that ought not be the way we approach life. We ought to approach life with the joy of the Lord, focused on trying to encourage and help others, not so self-centered that we purposely uh, look sad or hurt or, or upset to encourage others to ask uh, about not to appear unto men to fast. I, I want to say this, uh, by the way, he said, verily I'm saying to you, they have their reward. And their reward is that other people see that they're trying to put on a show of fasting. It's certainly that kind of fasting is never going to result in in faith being increased and prayer being answered and the flesh being being reduced and the flesh, the power, the grip of the flesh being broken. In fact, that kind of attitude and that kind of approach just makes the flesh stronger because it's all about pride and pride is flesh. Pride is, is self and flesh. And so we see there's a huge difference there. But fasting and prayer humbles us. Uh, it's about what I can do. Uh, oh, for, for these guys, it was about what I can do or, or what I've accomplished. And in this age of social media, so much of our Christianity is for show. Uh, so much of what we do, we, we post, and, and we're smart enough. I mean, we're, we're pretty savvy, so we don't, we don't out overtly say, look at what I'm doing for the Lord but, but we, we're creating, we're crafting uh, kind of our persona online and our image online. And, and uh, by the way, you can't fool the Lord with that stuff. He knows, he knows, he knows our motivation. He knows, and, and he doesn't want it to be about pride or the flesh. It ought to be for him. Uh, and, and by the way, it cheapens our service and it cheapens our relationship with him when it's all about others seeing and, and show and so forth. But, uh, but we can have uh, the secret, secret fasting is and helps our faith to grow. I like what Paul wrote to the Thessalonians in 2 Thessalonians 1 and verse 3, and we'll have to be done tonight. He said, we are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith grow, groweth exceedingly. And so they were growing, their faith was growing. I have no doubt, doesn't, show, doesn't say here, but I have no doubt that fasting would have been a part of that. And uh, go back to verse 21. How be it this kind, this kind, the, the difficult kind, the, the kind that's just been ongoing for a long time and you've not had a breakthrough in prayer, the, the kind where you've just not gotten an answer uh, from the Lord in prayer. This kind uh, goeth not out, uh, but by prayer and fasting. And so I think how important that is for us. Now, uh, here's what I'd like to ask us. I I'd like to ask us to commit sometime in the next 30 days, let's say between now and Thanksgiving. Certainly we'd, we'd you know, around Thanksgiving time, fasting is not at the forefront of our spiritual agendas, but, but it certainly can be between now and Thanksgiving. And, uh, and I would like us to, to, to commit to the Lord tonight, and I'm not going to stipulate whether it's food. I, I think at the least we need to give a day. And I, I think a day, I think just skipping a meal now, 
you know, health, consider your health. If you are on dietary sort of restrictions that this would be dangerous, certainly don't, and God knows that, and find other ways uh, to give up some things of the flesh. But, uh, but I'd like us to commit to, to taking a day, maybe a couple of days, uh, maybe, uh, maybe back in the old days and the early days here, and, and sometimes there's just such a burden that you give up sleep for a night and you pray through the night. Uh, fasting can be done in a number of ways. I mentioned already uh, TV and digital and, and, uh, and video and, and, uh, and social media. Uh, 